Hi everyone, I'm Dan Ambrose and welcome to This Week in Anderson with Dingo to Coach. I am Dingo and that is a Coach Steve Ellison. Very excited, Steve, to be here tonight at Anderson High School on location. And thanks to Chris Newton for getting us in here to, to do this. If yes. it wasn't for Chris, we probably wouldn't be in here. So thanks to Chris. And then Absolutely. We also have to thank uh, Peach Cobbler uh, Factory that also, also is uh, sponsoring Sponsor. this. Yep. Yeah, and then Peach Cobbler has uh, two locations. They've got one in Anderson Township right by Kroger's and they also got one on Edwards Road that is left of Penn State. Uh, Peach Cobbler Factory is a proud sponsor of this podcast, the Forest Hill School District and Anderson Township community. So thank you to Peach Cobbler for sponsoring that. And as we said, yes. uh, we wanted to do this before our golf outing. Right. So we're going to go ahead and do our top 25 running backs or top, you know, it might not be 25, but it's, we're going to list some of the ones that are there close to it yep. that are on the outskirts, some, and there's some that we're going to talk about how we debated where to put them on the list. And so. hopefully we didn't forget anybody, yeah. but you never know. But it's great to be here remote. Right. You know, I mean, we like being in your basement, but yeah. uh, it's great to be here, and we get to showcase uh, the Hall of Fame hallway here, and we got a great camera person, right Abby Ellis, who's helping us, so yeah. thank you, Abby. Yeah, and you are the director, so you just I am the director. Know, you just let her know what's going on. Let's so. get it going. You know, the top right. ten running backs. Let's so, do it. So we're gonna work our way down this yeah. way, right? So we're yeah. gonna work our way down here to our first few running backs here, and our first running back here is gonna be uh, Lou Andriatis, as they called him, Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou. <clears throat> so these are the running backs that we're gonna point out that are actually in the Hall of Fame. And then there's a bunch that aren't in the Hall of Fame right. that we're going to talk about. But Lou is a great one to start off with because he was one of the first ones for Vince Seriano. Yeah, he started, started it off, and he was a great running back, had a huge heart, and he, he, I loved watching him play. Yeah, and so you see here he had 36 career touchdowns, 3,084 all-purpose yards. And he's just, he was the really the first start of that run of great, as Jeff Hobson used to say, he used to call it tail, what, tailback high or something. That's, that's right. What he called, that's right. Called Anderson High School. Just turned so, him out. Yeah. And then, so right below him is the brother. Yeah. Jake. And, and Jake Andriatis and uh, another, and the, the two lines there of brothers that played within a few years apart. And if you look at all this uh, with Jake, I mean, in, in you know, one year he had uh, 2,268 all-purpose yards, and the year before that he Another had 2,046 yeah. all-purpose yards. I mean, he's very, as it says, a very explosive running back. Oh, I mean, he was, How he was fun, fun was he? He was fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, we got to watch it firsthand more because of Timmy. He played with Timmy. And Timmy played, so it was yeah. good to see him. So another heck no, of a running back. I, it's, these guys have got to be, you know, at least it, in the conversation, if not near the top. Absolutely. Totally yeah. agree. And I'm going to see we're gonna, we're going to go down to the next board. Work our way down here. Yeah. And so next one's Force Heiss. Yeah, right here. Forrest Heiss. Now, this was one of the first guys that was inducted into the uh, Anderson Hall of Fame. And uh, he had some great stats. And this was back, he graduated in, what, it was 1961? 60, yeah, 60, yeah. Yep. 61, so, so think about this real quick. Is You know, you think about all the time frames of this. So back in the 60s, he had 36 career touchdowns. That's a lot of touchdowns back in the 60s. Right. 3,084 all-purpose yards. And look at this. He was uh, captain, all-city, the all-star team. Alternate in the Northwest All Star Game, so Which that kind of yeah, tells you how good he that he good really is. So. Yeah, so that's another one that's on it. So that's three. There's actually six, I think, that are in the Hall of Fame. We're gonna walk We're down to the next one here, and it's another one that's uh, right here, yeah. back from class of 1949, John Steele, and he was on Anderson's first uh, undefeated team which I think goes along with some of those baseball teams, maybe. Yeah, the, he played with that group that played in the 50s, too. They yeah. did a good job. But I want you to think about this, too. I know times are different, but he led the city in scoring with 23 touchdowns. Back in 1948, that's a lot of touchdowns. All right. And then the other thing, Steve, right here is the uh, – Right here, uh, where was it at? I saw where he Let set the Ohio State record for points scored in a season. So that uh, that an Ohio State record back in 1948. At the for, time, which is unbelievable, yeah, incredible. I mean, 331 points that season he scored, which is just absolutely incredible. It, so which is why he's he definitely, in the Hall of Fame. yeah, and he's definitely got to be in a consideration of up towards the top of uh, of the Hall of Fame. That's here. right. That's right. All right. So we're gonna skip two boards down here, Danny, and we're gonna go to uh, Skip Ryan down here. Robert right Skip Ryan, class of 1966. So there's a couple good runners back in the 60s. I don't think a lot of people, I wasn't myself real familiar with him. Yeah. And I've, everybody always said, hey, you need to think about him. And Steve, the one thing that caught my eye in here, and I'm not sure what it is, was 
1966 Coach and Athlete Magazine All-American Football. Wow. So whatever that was back then, that, that's a pretty big honor to have that. And he had to set career rushing records in football with uh, 3,105 yards, single season record of 1,375, and 259 in a game. So Ooh, that's, that's impressive. pretty impressive that, he, that he's been able to do that. So yeah. he's another, another one up there. Well, that, we have to keep those guys in mind. Absolutely, you have to. You can't just because they're – you know, not rel you know closer to everybody's age. Here, no. you got to remember what they've done. No, so. especially when we talk about more, more recent guys like yep. Brody Berg. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, here we go. Our last one that's in the Hall of Fame running back Jason Druso, who was unbelievable. What a great athlete he was, and a great swimmer as you see there. But talk about him, Danny, because he was one of the guys that you loved. To he, announce. he he was one of the first ones that started, and he scored that uh, famous touchdown against Princeton that beat Princeton. And I still yeah. think that he got it against St. X in the playoffs. But I mean, look at all the stuff that he's done running back of the year running back of the year offensive player of the year i mean he's just done i mean he all state but i want everybody state. to think about this yeah. too is that he went both ways yeah he was running back and if he didn't go both ways think about what he could have done even more so I know. you got to think about that but i know times are different but it's it's just crazy so yeah so so that's that's all we have for right now yeah um and so let's talk about some of the names of the guys that that aren't in the Hall of Fame yet. Right. You know, not to say that they aren't, but they could potentially be. But I'm just going to throw out some names here, All right. and then we'll come we'll up with our them, top yeah. ten. So the names I got on the list, and the first one that's not in the Hall of Fame, which which obviously I think everybody um, who knows anything about international football would agree, would, would be Kyle Slater. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Kyle's one of those guys that when he came here to Anderson, he was just electrifying and played against great competition. And mm -hmm. it's scary to see what that what a guy would have done if he was here four years. Yeah. And he set all kinds of records just for two years. Man, Probably he was one of the best all around, quick as fast. I mean, I remember his kickoff, 98-yard yeah. kickoff return yeah. against Wynton Woods. Well, there were people that just came just to the games just to, just watch, to watch him. Kyle. Yeah, so It was he's, unbelievable. He's he's definitely up there. Next one on the list is Joey Sherrill. Oh, I remember man, how, tell you what. what a great running back he was. Yeah, and he went to OU, OU played and at played. OU, and did a really, really good job. And he was one of those power type, you know, he was just a really, really good running back, too. And he had to sit and wait for a little bit to get in his position. But can you imagine if he would have played? Had more. Yeah, had more yeah. time. So yeah. The next one is the most recent one, yeah. Brody Berg. And, and, and unbelievable stats for this guy. I mean, I think, what did we say? We had 85 touchdowns yeah. that he scored in his career, yeah. which is absolutely incredible. I mean, he set all kinds of records here at Anderson. And he's got to be considered to be in that top 10 just because of what he did, his longevity, starting as a sophomore, playing as a sophomore. I I mean, last year, his year was phenomenal, and yeah. he was fun to watch play. He was fun to watch. And in one game that sticks out that I'll never forget is the Kings game in, in a playoff. Okay. Uh, it was the uh, end of this last game of the season. Okay. Remember, he fumbled a couple times? Yeah, early. what did he do after that? Yeah. He went nuts, and yeah. they ended up winning. So that's yeah. something right Incredible. there for Bertie. Incredible. Next yep. on the list is uh, going back to the 90s, I believe, is P.J. Schiano. Yeah. He was another heck of a running back. And remember him in the Elder game and yeah. playing against Elder, and he was just He another, was tough. He was a really good – on a smaller size, but he yeah. ended up playing, I think, at Holy Cross. Like, he went and played. He did. For, I think it was at You're Holy right. Cross or Col – um, it might not be Holy Cross. Might, but I just remember him playing football at the next somewhere. level. Okay. So. Next one I got on the list is Kyle Blaha. Kyle was uh, – you know, he – so here, here's here's the thing, too, is we're talking about some running backs over in Evan Drives, and everybody says they don't run the football. Well, Kyle Blaha did, and yep. you had Brody Berg that did. Brody Berg. So you got two guys that are from that era where we said they don't run the football. Okay. Kyle Blaha was – and he started pretty early. Okay. Kyle was a tough running back, too, as well. Yeah, there's no question about yeah. that. Next one on the list is uh, Kenny Rod. Kenny Rod was awesome. Yeah. I remember screaming Kenny's name from the beginning. And yep, yep. Kenny's got to be really considered. I can hear you. Go yeah, Kenny. Yeah, go Kenny. <laughs> I had it made because I had Kenny Rydell and Kenny Rod. So yeah. whatever I said, Kenny, I was in good shape. But for once, you could, didn't get it yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's good. Yeah, and I, that's good. No, but yeah. Kenny was good. Kenny was Kenny was pretty awesome. All right, the next one was uh, I believe in the uh, early 2000s. Jake Davis. Jake Davis was a heck of a running back. Yeah, he was man. hard and nose. You know, who, you know who helped uh, helped him out a lot was Jake Andreatis. Really? It does it says much? And then he ended up going. Jake ended up going to Mount St. Joe, and I think Vince Soriano was his. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, so he played well, there. You can't for go Vince. wrong there yeah. with going with the legend. Uh, next one on the list uh, is the only running back to win a state yeah. championship, Elijah Story. And I tell you what, talk about that state championship game, man, that yeah. big run he had at the end. Yes. I mean, he was just I a can great. I see that he, across the, yeah. He's a great, great running back. You got to consider him, too. And, you know, we, we might, we were trying to think 25. We might be top 20. So some of these guys might be in, some might be out, but we'll just kind of get to that later. Uh, next one is Bobby Deck. 
Bobby Deck, man. I coached him in football. He was a hard nosed heck of a football player, man. He, uh, I, I would take him over anybody, man. He was, he was just a tough nosed kid. And what uh, years was he, was he like in the so, early nineties or? I, Coached in eighty what eighty nine I coached okay so eighty and early nine eighty okay. nine early nineties okay all right so he was good next one's uh, Kamel Bradley yeah so Kamel was during Jeff after after um, the state championship and okay all that. he was the running back and they kind of okay. had some down years but he did 1,400, 1,400 yards I mean he came in and I thought he did a good job he might not be considered but that's just somebody we thought about and okay. some that were mentioned on on some of the social medias. Yeah. So. The next one, I remember this guy, it was hard to, to, to bring down. It seemed like it took two or three guys to get him down, was Austin Facito. Yes, Facito Facado. Remember? Yeah, he would always say that. I would mess that up, and he, he was really <laughs> That's good. That's hilarious. He did a great job, too. So there's a there's another another good running uh, back. Another one I got on the list here is, um, I was brought to my attention from class of 75, Dennis uh, Datillo. Yeah, I'm not sure about much. Yeah, I heard he was pretty good back then. I'm not sure what their record was. Um, another one was Andrew Williams. Yeah, he Remember played. Another, he played another one with Dreyer. Okay, That's another one with Dreyer and Patrick <laughs> Johnson too. But okay, I don't think they've got the numbers compared to some of these other guys. Okay, but then, um, yeah, they're they're definitely good. I got a couple left here. One is uh, Mike Regan. Oh, absolutely, Mike Regan. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, Mike Regan. Hard I forgot runner. about that. Yeah, yeah, Mike Regan, and then last but not least is uh, Jeff Gannon. Yeah, Jeff was another one. I mean, it, so you know, and, and it's hard to compare the stats from one year to the next. You know, comparing to nineteen forty eight to to this, and like when we get into that top one. Honestly, you get in one, we say he's number one, he's number two. They could flip. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's so hard to pinpoint. I'm just going to go with what what we think or what yeah. we see. Yeah. So, um, yeah, everybody could be in this list and we might have forgotten some people, but, but we compiled a list of 10 and again, it doesn't it's, necessarily it's, have to be in, in, in that order, but we think this might be the, the 10 in all due fairness for, you know, all the decades have gone by who would be in the top 10. Yeah. And I think I just like, you know, right outside the top 10, Steve, I, you know, I, it's just, I mean, it's tough, man. It's, I don't know. It's it's. I was sitting there thinking, you know, the guys that I have outside the top ten, or you know, Kenny Rod's got to be, you know, uh, close to that. I yep. mean, that, I mean, that. I mean, uh, you know, and then you got Jake Davis that's close to the top. Kyle Blaha. So those guys are like right on the cusp. I thought. Okay. All right. Yeah, but well, I just fine. had they, a tough they, decision they can all try to right around there. Try to 10. make. So okay. Then go down to nine. All right. Well, we, and the other one you had in there for. Well, and then the other one too is is PJ Schiano. Yeah. I mean, hit the, so. I mean, right now, if I had a if I had a go, I, I man, that's tough. It's a split between to me, Kenny and PJ, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, good for them to be in that conversation. Right. I, I agree. So, what what do you? I mean, what would you what would you have as, as the ten? I mean, like, what would you be your number ten? You say PJ or, P, or well, Kenny. PJ was awful tough, but but I loved watching Kenny play. Yeah. I watched yeah. watching him run. So he was another one. So I mean, yeah. that would probably be you know Kenny Rod at number ten, PJ. Okay. So we kind of maybe have a. A little bit of a tie, yeah, tie there. there. All, All right, right. number nine. The number nine, I'm going to go with Skip Ryan. I know a lot of people don't know a lot about him, but we, we just talked showed him. about it yep. earlier. He was in the that, stats. that that magazine and did a great job. And this is in the '60s when they, you know, but but, but he's you got it. We got to have some of the older groups that people don't know about. Yeah. And, 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 undefeated team. And I know a lot of people might not agree with that, but yep. you know that's just kind of what we thought. That's right. Know? So that's uh, right. Number eight. So number eight, I'm going to go with Elijah Story. Okay. Elijah Story was one heck of a running back. He's got a ring. Uh, he does have a ring, so he was uh, he was good, man. You think you agree with so far what we got here? No, there's no question. I mean, yeah. and and the thing that we have to not forget about when we talk about all these running backs, Danny, is is the, the great offensive linemen that oh, they yeah. they ran behind. Absolutely. You know, some of these guys ran behind the Andrew Norwells. And, yeah. And, you know, some of these other ones, the Ty Halls. You know, and so it's incredible. But, you know, and we'll probably do an offensive lineman one. Yeah, so, we'll have, yeah. that's going to be hard to do, though. That will be hard to do. All right, number so seven. That, number seven is going to be Joey Sherrill. Joey Sherrill went I on mean, to play at OU. Joey Sherrill was one heck of a running back, running hard. Uh, I just remember some of his games. I mean, it's hard to think about. I, I was trying to think, oh, I remember when he played, but I don't remember. Now that I'm thinking about what year he played, I can't yeah. remember. I can remember one game specifically up at uh, Fairfield. 
and uh, he just went crazy. I mean, yeah. and and they weren't just like you know ten runs, ten yards yeah. here. 10, I mean, he was like Plow ripping off down. 40, 50 yards at a time. And I think that he had to wait until after PJ, wasn't it? I think it's so, what the timing so, was. Yeah, I so think. the timing was the. So just imagine both of those guys, yep. you know, coming yep. in and playing. Number six. All right, we're gonna go with uh, Steele. Steele. I'm go John Steele. All right. He set all kinds of records and early on and with that forty eight team and. We got to think about that. I know 23 touchdowns doesn't sound like a lot, yeah. but back then it set an Ohio State record. And one of the first ones to go into the Anderson Hall of Fame. Yep, uh, he's he's definitely on number there. five. Uh, this is where it got kind of got dicey and hard to do, but I, I, I was trying to put him up a little higher, and I, I it was hard because I don't know. I, maybe he should be higher. I don't know. I got Brody Berg. I got okay. Brody Berg at five. Um, 85 touchdowns he scored in his career. There's no one on the list that has. No one has it. That's why I felt like maybe he should he should go up. Um, and I just and he was one of my favorite players too. And I talked to you know not not a running back, but Joey Emmerich was another guy in that yeah. class last yeah, year yeah, yeah, that yeah. I liked. But but Brody Berg could be really considered to maybe even go up, maybe higher. But it's it, it's tough because. You know, we have that early on running back, so right. we'll kind of get into that. Once you get to this point, it's going to be really tough. All right, All right so, so, so this one is, is kind of a – I'm just going to – since they're brothers, we're just going to call it a – you can flip them, either right. three or four. Three and three A. So I've got Jake and Lou Andriatis. Okay, so, so Lou Andriatis, which was the older brother that right. played he in played the, first with Vince and they got the kind of the, the tailback high school thing going, and then yep. Jake took over for him. Yep, uh, and, and their older brother, Steve and uh, – Steve, and then um, – Mark played. Mark played. Yeah, played, right. he played, yeah, he played yeah, defensive yeah. end. Didn't play the running back. Right. Just right. a great athletic. They were part of a great at running back. Oh yeah, great guys. athletic family. But so they're three and three A. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know, three and four. Just they're tied. Basically. Okay. All right. Number two. All right. This 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 is tough, man. Because I, I we've been going back and forth with it. But we also have to consider that a lot of this stuff too is some of the votes that we had from people. Yeah. So we got a lot of these votes from a lot of people. We did get good response. And we got great responses. Yeah. And. These guys were the top two vote getters. Yep. Uh, every single time. Yep. And so, I oh man, I was gonna ch- I was gonna change back, but I'll I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go Jason Drusso too. Number two. All right. But but Jason Drusso honestly could be number one. There there's no I mean, question he could be number one. Just like we did with with the quarterbacks yeah, that with, with Shu and with Daniel. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it I don't think you can go wrong either way you go yeah. here. You know, yeah. you're not saying dead for sure that it's one way or the other, but definitely Jason Drusso is definitely in the top two. And, and number one, I had Kyle Slater. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was whatever put that over the top two was the voting that we had. Yes. And I've seen so many responses saying, hands down, you know, some people said yeah. unbelievable runner. Yeah. I just remember this. I remember that. So yeah. Yeah. that kind of swayed me over to Kyle more because of the fan voting yeah. and what we had. So a lot of this, again, was based on fan voting too, yeah. not just just. Uh, I mean, we took into consideration what we thought, but the fan voting was huge. Well, the, you know, the one thing I wanted to mention is, um, let's see, out of the top ten, one, two, three, four, five, five of the top ten are in the Hall of Fame. Right. Um, you know, so some of these other guys need to be considered. You know, definitely Kyle. If we're saying he's you know, number I, one or, I, I or one eight, and then I mean, he's got to be considered for the Hall of Fame here coming Brody up. Brody Berg should be coming up. Brody Berg, without a question, is going to be in the Hall of you Fame. Know, when uh, it's you his know, time. Yeah, you got a lot of these guys that are in there, but man, it's uh, this was tough to tough yeah. to do. I'm glad we did it, and I'm sure we're going to get grief for it. That's why yeah. we did it. So, but so if you if you think about it, so we've got basically we named. Uh, I had 19 guys down, so. That's yeah. 19. Threw a, I threw a couple more. Yeah, so we had 19. 20. So we're, we're close to 20 running yeah. backs that, uh, you know, and again, drop your comments. Let us know what you think, if you think we should have had somebody in and out. And some that we forgot about. We forgot about that with uh, quarterbacks. We forgot yeah. about, yeah. was it Brian Regan? Or yeah. Forgot about him. Yeah. So well, Yeah, we, and we had put it out there trying to right. get information as late as right before we went on the air here. So, um, you know, apologies if we forgot somebody, right. but this is just kind of a fun thing to do, you know, and it'll be great for the guys to talk about at the golf outing coming up. Yeah, so so maybe I'll go by what 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 Dale, when I talked to Dale Adams today, he, yes. he had... He Words of wisdom by He Dale. basically just had... Five number ones. Oh, of course he, he did. He didn't want to. He of didn't want to go. Did. He didn't want to pick. Yeah. He, he didn't want to pick between. He's like, and he asked us, "Why are you guys doing this? Like, what a good. What are you trying? What to a do good to, guy. To, you know, get everybody upset. What a good guy. I don't think we're gonna upset everybody. I think no. it's just a neat little 
you know, talking point. Just and, fun to talk yeah, about. So, but Steve, man, it was a great trying to figure all this out. Yeah. Uh, some great running backs, and yeah. again, I'm sure we forgot somebody. No, it's all yeah. good, and thank you to Abby for a great job. And and uh, I thought I did a great job directing. You, you did a you did a pretty good job. Um, uh, better Whoa. than I thought. Better Whoa. than I thought. I mean, okay. I finally gave you. I left my phone at home on purpose. Yeah. To see what you would do. Right, it was and you no came problem. Through. No yeah, problem. You came through. Thank so, you. So it was a good day. Comments Abby, so. on how the how the podcast went. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, again thank our sponsor, Peach Cobbler Factory, is a home to the world's most unique offering of desserts under one roof. Visit them to enjoy 12 flavors of warm, delicious cobblers served with vanilla ice cream, banana pudding, cinnamon rolls, put and shake like the banana pudding, Steve, that you know that you love so oh, much. Of course I do. Uh, wash your food down with their sweet peachy tea or cold rush brew coffee. The Peach Cobbler Factory offers catering to meet everybody's needs. But at both locations, the dining rooms are open every day from noon to until 10 p.m. Let's go. And both locations are owned or operated by local residents. Peach Cobbler Factory is a proud sponsor of this podcast, the Forest Hill School District and Anderson Township Community. So thank you to Peach Cobbler for sponsoring us and uh, excited and hopefully have this blasted out before our uh, we gotta get golf it out. out. Yeah, we got our golf outing coming up this yeah. week. So again, thank everybody. Thanks for joining. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for our YouTube channel. And uh, just we would love for anybody to keep getting and building up our uh, YouTube viewer yeah. viewership. Good, good job, Danny. All right. Good job, good Steve. Job. Way to go. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for This Week in Anderson. For Dan Albers and Steve Ellis, you've been watching This Week in Anderson. Good night, everybody.